We all want to get out razor sharp photographs. And in my long time experience, sharpness is a really important thing, yeah, even a requirement for outstanding image. So before I decide for a new lens, for instance, I research on how sharp it is. But to be honest, this is way not enough to get pin sharp photographs. So in this video, I'm going to explain you what sharpness actually is, how we perceive sharpness, which impact it has to the viewers, and importantly, which tools and techniques I use to get out stunning sharp photographs all the time. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I got often asked what I do to get my photographs looking sharp and yeah, this is a really good question because I do quite a lot of different things therefore. Well, just quick, what is sharpness? And therefore I would say, let's have a better logical look at an image. Uh, yeah, I'm quite happy that this is not a medicine channel by the way. So however, what I did is I took these two test shots for you. One of them is sharp, one is blurry. On the left side we have the sharp photograph, on the right hand side the blurry one. And now let's zoom in to 200% on both and let's find out what's the difference. And we're interested in the pixels here now. You know, each pixel contains information about the light of the particular position of that scene. And when we have a look at the pixel, what we can recognize quite easily on the sharp image, we have much more contrast between the pixels. And on the blurry one, it seems that each pixel contains a bit of information of the neighbor pixel. So it is all about contrast. We are talking about micro contrast here. Sharpness is nothing more than micro contrast. Finally, if we want to get pin sharp photographs, we are really interested in getting high micro contrast. And there are different ways to achieve that. The more of them we use, the sharper our images get. Well, the first important question is, does gear matter in the point of view of sharpness? And you know, I was always honest with you. I generally don't think that you need the best gear to get outstanding photographs. But there are anyway even big differences between quality lenses and cheap lenses. So what I do is before I buy a new lens, I try to find out how sharp it is. And there exist different databases on the web where lenses are compared. The XOMark is quite good for instance. I will link it down in the description for you. And I also look for sample shots to get an idea of how sharp the lens performs, especially at the corners. There are some things where quality lenses offer advantages over the cheap alternatives. We'll talk about that during the video. But important, before you go and now to your gear dealer, don't get me wrong, it is not done with buying an expensive gear. You, you even don't necessarily need to buy a sharp lens or the sharpest lens on the market to get out razor sharp photographs. You just need a minimum of sharpness on your lens. There are differences in gear though, but they are totally insignificant if you consider all the following dips of this video. Especially in landscape photography, we often see situations where we have to expose longer. And we are not talking about multiple seconds or even more minutes we expose. We are used to be careful with long exposures like that. So in most cases we don't have issues there. But when I have a look at my best photographs, in most cases I expose between a fifth or a tenth of a second. And this is exactly that range where we tend to get shakes in our photographs. Because it doesn't feel like a long exposure, but it is long enough to get shakes in so that we lose micro contrasts. You remember, we want to have high contrast between the pixels. So when our camera moves a tiny bit while we expose, we shift a bit of information to the neighbor pixels. We lose sharpness, it gets blurry. So what can we do to get rid of this issue? And the answer is sturdiness. First of all, use a tripod. It will not only help you to get out sharper photographs, it will also help you to fine tune your composition. But don't use the cheapest tripod you find because a good tripod is even more important than a good camera. 
but you also don't need the most expensive tripod. So I will link you my two tripods down in the description. I'm super happy with, they are in a different price range, but both are super sturdy. Another trap for losing sharpness is the shutter release. So when you press the release button on the camera, you give an unwished mechanical impulse to your camera, what leads into shakes obviously. And to get rid of this issue, I often use a two seconds timer if the timing is not so important for my composition, or use a remote release. These infrareds here from Sony are quite good. You don't have to black them anywhere. They work over infrared. They are just a few euros, so definitely not the, the biggest investment in the world, but super handy. I will link them down in the description for you. I'm not sure if there exists something like that also for other brands. So if you use Nikon, Canon, Fuji or something like that, and you know that there exists something like that also for that brands, please leave a comment below. So yeah, that this adds to this video here. And for the case that you don't know, read the comments below. Maybe anyone has a dip here. Infrared releases are super handy, but it doesn't need to be infrared. Also a traditional cable release will help you to get sharp photographs. The stabilizer is also an important thing for sharpness and my tip here is always turn it off if you don't need it, because it reduces the sharpness, what we don't want, right? I made already a video about where I tested which impact the stabilizer has actually on the sharpness with technology of today, also with tips when I use a stabilizer. Some of them are quite crazy, by the way. I will link the video up there for you. Well, same as it is important that our camera is sturdy so that we don't get shakes on it, it is also important that all the elements in our composition don't move. And this is a thing that is often forgotten about. Grass is swinging in the wind is a very good example here. Or the foliage up in the tree moves already with the smallest breeze. And don't get me wrong here, we can use these techniques to bring intentionally movement in our composition with using motion blur. But this should not happen by accident, we should decide by ourselves if we want to use motion blur and also for the amount of motion blur. And this effect is the same as with the shakes, the pixels simply inherit information to the neighbor pixels and finally we lose sharpness, it gets blurry. There are two different ways to get rid of that. On the one hand, you could just wait that the wind goes away and expose when the leaves or the grasses don't move anymore. I often do this, but to be honest, it's quite a risk because you could overlook the one or other moving grass or leaf or whatever. So it's always good to take more exposures in that case, just to get safe. On the other hand, you could also just try to get a shorter shutter speed and therefore you could raise either your ISO or you open the aperture a tiny bit more to get more light on your sensor. Opening the aperture a bit more is a good tip to get rid of unwished motion blur, but there are even two more things you should consider about aperture to get out pinch up photographs. Well, first of all, your lens is not equally sharp on each aperture. So if you open your aperture too much, your image could get softer. What's happening here is the optical elements inside your lens simply mix the information between the neighbor pixel. So we lose sharpness, it gets blurry. And also if you close the aperture a bit too much, we get diffraction. The entire photographs get softer then. So what's happening here? Well, the aperture itself reflects light, what gets scattered to the center of the lens and this light takes down the contrast between all the pixels and finally in this case we lose sharpness. And here is where I see the biggest difference between cheap and quality lenses by the way. You can open or close the aperture of quality lenses much more than on cheap lenses without getting bad results because of better build quality, maybe a better coating so that the aperture or other elements inside the lens reflect less light so that we get less disturbing light mixing our pixels. But we can also get out stunning sharp photographs with cheaper lenses and what's really important here for each lens also for quality lenses, you should know about the aperture or you should know about which aperture is most sharp or how far you can go on your apertures. And I made already a video about that where I show how you can test this out easily by yourself to get out the best of your gear. It is not only about lens sharpness, it also considers other type of gear. I will link it up there for you. Before I mention the things that have the most impact to sharpness, 
My friends, if you like this video, I would be really happy if it could give me a thumb up. You know, it's just one click for you, but it would really help me to get this video better ranked on YouTube. Thank you, therefore. Another really important thing that allows you to control the sharpness over your entire photograph is depth of field. In landscape photography, we usually want to have the entire photograph pin sharp from the foreground to the distance. I mentioned this already in some of my videos. This has an evolutionary reason. Yeah, I mean, Stone Age men simply wanted to find out if the landscape has potential for living there. The higher the depth of field, the more depth we get sharp. In other words, the focus area gets more depth. And we get control over that simply by using the aperture in the right way. The more we close the aperture, the higher the depth of field, the more of the scene gets sharp. For this image here, for instance, I had to close the aperture to f16 on an APS-C lens to get everything sharp from the foreground to the distance. And the more you open the aperture, the shallower gets the depth of field, the less of your scene gets sharp. For this image here, for instance, I had to open the aperture to get just a tiny part of the scene sharp. Also here, the optical elements inside your lens simply mix the informations between neighbor pixels so we lose sharpness of areas that are outside of the focus area the more we open the aperture. And the trick is here. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a trick, but it, it ends up in sharp photographs. So the trick is to close the aperture just as much as necessary. You remember, if you close it too much, it ends up in diffraction and everything gets blurry. You remember, sharpness is nothing else than contrast between the pixels. So what do we need to get contrast? You know it? Right, we need light. Yeah, light is even the reason for contrast. Without light, no contrast obviously. But light doesn't automatically lead into high contrast. Very important is the quality of the light. I will not go into detail here, there will come an own video about light, how you can use it to your advantage. Let's just talk about the properties that have an impact to sharpness. And again, we're interested in contrast, micro contrast in this case. Very important therefore is the direction of the light. We get the highest contrast with backlight through, but we get most micro contrast when the light comes nicely from the side. So also the right light has an effect if your photographs should look amazingly sharp. In my experience, focus is one of the things that has even the biggest impact to the sharpness of a photograph. And what I do is I use autofocus most of the time. Important here is to use single autofocus, not continuous autofocus. Continuous autofocus is better when you're filming or photographing moving elements, which continuously change the distance to you, like sport photography, for instance. But for stills, I can highly recommend to use single autofocus. Autofocus has got so good meanwhile, so that I totally trust on it. Just if there's not enough light, I go over to manual focus instead. And a good tip here is, by the way, to be really fast with using manual focus and to be really accurate with it. Use the magnification tool on a camera and look for the highest contrast between the pixels. You remember, highest contrast between the pixel means highest sharpness. It's so easy, isn't it? And I have to say, I use focus picking as well, but just for rough focusing. I do fine tuning just by comparing the contrast between the pixel using the magnify tool. But the most important thing about focus is to know where to focus on your scene. And this depends on the focusing technique you use, obviously. There exist different focus techniques and I tried them all out over the years. What I do is I use distance focusing most of the time because it leads into the best possible sharpness for me and it is quite easy to use. I just focus to the furthest point in the composition that should get sharp. What could be the distance mountains, for instance? But there are some exceptions, so if you're interested about mastering your focusing technique, I made already a whole video about just about that one thing, where I go through all these different focusing methods. I will link the video up there for you. So yeah, it is so easy to get razor sharp images, isn't it? A bonus tip here, or even two, always check your exposures out in the field. Always get sure that your photographs are really as sharp as you want. If they are not, change your aperture, the ISO, all the things I mentioned in this video. And if you even want to boost the effect of sharpness, 
Use sharpness, clarity, texture in post-processing. These things do nothing else than, you guessed it already, they do nothing else than increasing the micro contrast. The sharpening tool increases the contrast between the pixels, the clarity tool between a tiny bit bigger areas and the texture tool between even much bigger areas. But importantly, these post-processing tools will not rescue a blurry photograph. It is just all about boosting already existing sharpness. So always get sure to go home with sharp photographs in your bag. And one more thing, I think sharpness is really important, but anyway, not the most important thing in photography. In my experience, the highest impact for getting out amazing photographs is composition. I will link you my composition video up there just for the case that you want to improve your composition skills. My friends, I hope this video was useful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If yes, give me a thumb up and don't forget about your friends. Share this video on Facebook and Instagram. Give your friends also the chance to get sharper photographs. I thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see You are the artist I'll never be Stay with me and I have no doubt You'll make a painting that makes you proud